Hey everybody, I saw 100 movies in theaters this year, so now I'm going to give you my bottom five and my top five really quick, because I have done this, or attempted this twice already, or three times, or something, and talking too long kills it, so let's not do that. I'll just give you like a sentence. If I can't come up with more than a sentence for each one, then there you go. So. We'll do all bottom five and then all top five. So the bottom five are blocker in order from five to one. So Blockers, The Spy Who Dumped Me, Ralph Breaks the Internet, which I accidentally wrote Ralph Rex the Internet, and then I almost misspelled his name Ralph with a W, like W-R-A-L-P-H, because I just forgot so much about that movie. The 1517 to Paris, it starts with an overexposed shot, and it's just super fucking boring. And I feel pretty, I already have two or three videos on that movie. That movie is fucking horrible. Watch it if you want to get angry at a movie. Whatever. Did I say anything about blockers? No, not really. John Cena's ugly, and I hate him, and he's disgusting looking, and the whole movie is just vulgar, stupid bullshit, and The Spy Who Dumped Me is just confusing mess. I hate looking at Kate McKinnon. She's like this drunken master, except not. Like, she's hyper-competent through incompetence, and it's just annoying the whole time. Like, I thought they were doing the thing where it would be like, she was secretly in charge the whole t No. She's, she's just an idiot who happened to get through it. And that's all. So, again, Blockers, Spy Who Dumped Me, Ralph Rex breaks the internet for fuck's sake. God. Stupid, pandering, boring shit. 1517 to Paris, I feel pretty. Those are the bottom five. Top five, maybe I'll expand on a little bit more. Teen Titans Go to the Movies, number five. I like Teen Titans Go. I don't know why everybody hates Teen Titans Go. It's so much fun. They have an Oregon Trail episode in which I'm pretty sure most, if not all of them, die from dysentery. And Beast Boy even has a line like, just go get yourself some dysentery, yo. Like, being a dead-ass ghost is just fun. It's more fun than playing Oregon Trail, I guess. Which, yeah, kind of. So, number four, Into the Spider-Verse. Best comic book movie I've ever seen. Visually, it, like, I thought that shuttery frame rate shit was going to get really annoying. But, and I saw it in 3D. And 3D has that shit where it's like, I don't know if it's the shutter angle is tighter to fit in like the 48 frames a second you need for like a separate frame for each eye even though I figured they would be kind of overlaid and like the glasses make it whatever um, so the the juttery frame rate actually makes it so like if you were to pause it on any given frame you'd get basically comic book panels any single frame of that movie looks outstanding and there are things like, um, like Kingpin's design is the silliest looking shit I've ever seen. But it just works. He doesn't ever come off looking stupid and jokey somehow. He just looks intimidating and awesome. Even though he's literally a sphere with some limbs and a face sticking out. It's cool stuff. Nick Cage is consistently hilarious as Spider-Man Noir. Um, Penny Parker doesn't get annoying. Peter Porker is really funny. Of course, it's John Mulaney. He's going to be funny. Um, and it was, I guess, a Spider-Man origin story, but it wasn't, like, annoying shit. Because you, you technically get, like, six or seven origin stories in one. Because you get the original Peter Parker, who... <laughs> who it turns out was Raimi Peter Parker, because right at the beginning there's a 
there's a couple of nods to Spider-Man 3, I think. Particularly the stupid dance scene, but he's in the suit. And they made the they made gold out of the shitty Spider-Man 3. So that was pretty cool. That's like, it's the first couple of minutes, and then you know, you're like, oh, okay, this is going to be really, really good. And then it was. So, on to the next one. Four was Into the Spider-Verse. Three is Assassination Nation. And with, like, the subject matter of the movie, like, oh, everybody's doxing everybody. It's, like, just people being shitty to each other using social media. Just... It's the cyberbullying thing, where it's like, Nigga, how could you get cyberbullied? Nigga, just get up from the computer. Just close your eyes. LMAO. Um, every single person in the town of Assassination Nation is doxing everybody, and everybody's looking through, like, the hundreds of pages of documents that everybody has on everybody. It's like, you're putting in so much effort just to be pissed off at each other. And then people are overreacting to shit like, um, I can't remember if it's, if it's the mayor or like the principal of the school or something, but some higher up in the town, he, uh, he has like photos of his daughter or something, it's like toddler age or something, in the bath, and it's like, clearly that's not pornographic, it's just, look, my baby's taking a bath. And the whole town's like, you fucking pedophile, get him out of there, you you can't be around our kids. And I don't remember if it's that, no, that guy just sort of almost lives in exile, but a guy earlier than that shoots himself on stage like Bud Dwyer. They do not follow it up with, hey man, nice shot. Assassination Nation is cool. Like, a lot of people hate the final line of the movie, but I liked it just because it made sense and that's probably the most accurate portrayal of 4chan that has ever been in a movie apart from I think I think maybe they got the URL wrong or something for 4chan at one point like there's a close-up of a computer screen and maybe they get a 4chan URL wrong which is like fine whatever that is the most minor detail that you could have fucked up but whatever on to number two, Upgrade. If anybody has seen Venom, which I'm guessing is a lot more people than have seen Upgrade, go see Upgrade now. Because Upgrade is Venom if Venom wasn't shit. Like, Venom relies heavily on CG and kind of caring about comic book stuff and blah blah blah. Symbiotes, um... They want to take over the planet or something, and there's multiple ones, but Upgrade is just a guy gets a computer chip in his neck because he's a quadriplegic and it lets him walk, but then the computer chip has a mind of its own, and it can help Gray, the main character. I don't want to say any more about it other than it's Venom, but good. And stem the uh, computer chip it doesn't have an annoying voice like venom although the voice effect on venom is cool i just don't like venom's voice which i think apparently is tom hardy's voice but just doing that like really gravelly monster voice and then number one is thoroughbreds it's like one of the earlier movies that i've seen this year and possibly I'm just biased towards it because I loved it so much back when I saw it and then I saw it again after it came out on blu-ray which I still don't own the blu-ray I should probably own the blu-ray but thoroughbreds has my favorite shot I've ever seen in a movie and it's it's the simplest shot ever um, it's literally slow zoom Character walks off screen, a costume change happens with some audio happening to sell what's going on off camera, and then the character comes back into the shot and cries herself to sleep. <laughs> That's all that happens, but it's just the best thing 
I've ever seen in a movie. Thoroughbreds is so great. Like, some of the dialogue is way too on the nose, and I originally had it marked as a 4.5 out of 5 stars, but then I was like, fuck it. This is my favorite movie of the year. I'm, I'm bumping it up to 5 stars. Um, because the, the last scene of the movie, which my favorite scene is the last real scene, and then the last thing that actually is shown on screen is, um, in my opinion, just an excuse to get Anton Yelchin on the screen one last time because he died. So I feel that they could have either done it in a different sequence or just lopped off the entire last scene. Like, at the end of my favorite scene, I was fully expecting a hard cut to credits. That would have been fucking perfect. But they didn't do that. They had to get Anton Yelchin in one more time. So, whatever. But Thoroughbreds is still my favorite movie of the year. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was just about to say, uh, possibly of the last few years, but no. I saw Blade Runner last year, and that's still the best thing. I still have the jacket. And actually, on that note, the Blade Runner coat gets recognized a lot more often than I expected it to ever get recognized. Um, but there you go. Bottom five, top five, whatever. If I had done as much effort as I initially planned to, this would have taken fucking forever. But... I brought the notebook. Actually, I got a new notebook. It's douchey looking leather one. And I got a bunch of new pens and inks. So, there you go. I don't know if I'm going to continue seeing a hundred movies a year. At least not compulsorily. If I happen to, then so be it. But maybe, maybe I don't force it next year. Because some of the movies I saw, like, I didn't mention Sergeant Stubby, because Sergeant Stubby is a stupid dumb kids movie, uh, with a not, not a talking dog. Normal dog in World War One, I, I think it is. Um, yeah, World War One was with the trenches and shit. Um, <laughs> Sergeant Stubby has a scene where... The dog, like, sees a grenade land in the trench, runs past, grabs the grenade, and then runs off camera, and you just hear this explosion sound, and you're like, oh my god, that dog is going to be everywhere. And then cut to the guy runs over, like, Stubby, are you okay? And, like, a plank of wood fell onto Stubby but Stubby's still dying of a broken ankle or something because there's no gore because it's a stupid kid's movie. And then Stubby lives. And then it was a true story the whole time. It's like, what the fuck? What is this? So I didn't mention that because it kind of had something... It had an excuse, I guess. Um, another one is A Wrinkle in Time, which I was just angry while I was in the theater, but because it was... It was like really pretty almost like the background was all cluttered and fancy looking and shiny and there was all kinds of like really pretty CG stuff but it was like pointless like the book was already confusing I did actually read some of the book <laughs> when I was in school and I was confused but I wasn't nearly as confused as when I saw the movie um, and then I also didn't mention Isle of Dogs, which Isle of Dogs, I think, I think I saw Isle of Dogs, like, right after Thoroughbreds, and I was like, man, that's, like, already my second favorite movie of the year, but long live Thoroughbreds, and then it, it slowly just kept getting bumped down by Assassination Nation, Upgrade, and Teen Titans. And into the Spider Verse, actually. Thoroughbreds, Upgrade, Assassination Nation, Teen Titans. What? 
What did I just... What did I just say? Thoroughbreds. Upgrade. Assassination Nation. Oh, Into the Spider-Verse and Teen Titans. I thought I'd just listen. Whatever. I'm gonna cut this off, because I'm rambling now. And I feel like the rambling was better than the actual fucking top five, bottom five thing. That'll teach me to steal gimmicks. Anyways, see you all in Fuck You, It's January.